Uh, there's been a lot of hoo-ha recently to go green or go home with the UK ban on petrol cars now on course to be implemented by 2035. But with a great change comes great responsibility and following a spate of electric car fires and not to mention the recent indoor car park fire at Luton Airport that saw 1,500 vehicles destroyed. New proposed government guidelines look set to be implemented. These include widening indoor car parking spaces and quite literally dunking, burning electric cars into baths of water. What? <laughs> it comes after ministers were told that battery-powered vehicles posed a medley of risks to indoor car parks, which could render many 1960s-era fire safety laws dangerously out of date. Joining me now to discuss uh, this is a motoring journalist Quinton Wilson. Hello, Quinton. Hi, Kevin. Uh, how safe is my... Well, I haven't got one, actually, but just imagine I have got an electric car. How safe is it? So there were 100,000 car fires um, in the UK every year, and, and the figures we have are less than 300 of those are electric cars. So that is 0.03%. So you're much, much, much less likely to have a fire in an electric car than you are in a combustion car. You, I think it's about 20 times more likely to have a fire with a, a petrol or diesel car than a, 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 an EV. So, you know, the statistics, which which are pretty solid with 12 years of electric cars being being around, suggest that, you know, they're not not the fire risk that people people say. And that Luton car park, Kevin, it wasn't started by an electric car, it was started by a diesel Range Rover. Uh, yes, I, I did hear that. Uh, I'm not sure whether they've established that 100%, but it looks that way. Um, now, what's this uh, thing about uh, putting my electric car into a bath of water? Uh, w w what is that all about? So lithium-ion batteries are difficult to put out. So um, they, they, they take much longer, they require much, much, much more water, and they, they take a long time to sort of cool down. So on this old tech, these Gen 1 batteries, um, fire services are looking at alternative ways of just putting the whole battery pack into um, a, a bath of water. It, it's difficult and, and fairly impractical in a, in, a, in a road traffic accident, but those batteries are changing. The battery chemistries are getting a lot better and there are less combustion materials and, 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 and less um, electrolyte in them and, and less cobalt. And we will see Certainly with LFP batteries, they're very, very hard to catch catch fire. And also we'll get towards solid state batteries, which will, will have very little fire risk at all. So yes, you need to do something about it. Yes, you need a set of standards and fire, fire officers and, 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 and fire brigades need to understand. But let's just not panic about this. It's not as bad as people are claiming on social media. Uh, it rarely is, Quinton, with any issue. But uh, in terms of electric cars, I mean, how is the electric car project going? Uh, because a lot of people are uh, reticent, uh, first of all, because of the infrastructure. Driving around with an electric car is known to be very problematic. You know, will you find somewhere to charge it up? And, of course, once you do, uh, you have to wait a long time and so on and so forth. But also... Uh, questions are being asked about just how ecological they are, how ecologically friendly they are. You know, the, but the manufacture of the batteries uh, in itself uh, is not exactly green. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, if you break it right down, in the long term, electric cars might, in terms of the components required, uh, be more environmentally unfriendly than petrol cars. So people are thinking about that. I mean, electric car purchase, I mean, there's a lot around, but it's not quite taking off, I think, how uh, the enthusiasts had hoped. Well, look, there's 20% of the market now, which is electric car. Um, and we've seen some really, really high figures in August and September. Private sales aren't as high as they, they should be, but, but fleet sales are very good. Those figures are being replicated in France um, and, and in America too. So this is a global thing. Electric cars are, are, are huge in, in, in China. Um, and the, the ecological point is that, you know, there's a lot of research now that, that, that says it... it it's far, far, far more polluting to drill for oil, explore for oil, refine the oil, ship it around the world, do all this stuff.
than 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 mine for lithium for, for for a battery, and that carbon debt in an EV is paid off in about fifteen thousand miles, um, and then after that, it's absolutely carbon neutral because there's no tailpipe emissions. And, and people say that the tires give off particulates. Well, my electric car is still on its original tires that came from the factory after 37,000 miles. So they're, they're not disintegrating as people would say. So I think we, we all of us need to be, be, be aware of, of the facts of this and not to listen to social media and not to listen to all the, the harbingers of doom that, that just don't want electric cars to go forward. And this idea that an electric car is 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 less is more polluting than a, a fossil fuel car, given that the amount of resources to get that oil out the ground and then transport it around the world and refine it, it it's 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 a nonsense. So if you look at the science, the science will tell you that electric cars are much much greener than combustion cars. What about the pressure on the grid, though? If we all get electric cars and we're charging up from the grid, then. Uh... <laughs> By one step removed, we're still, uh, you know, drawing on fossil fuels and all the things that damage the environment. We're just sort of saying, oh, because we plug our car in, we're not actually doing it, but we are fueling our cars in the end from the same old sources. Well, I mean, nearly 40% of electricity coming to the grid now is renewable um, in the UK. And, you know, all that wind and that solar and that nuclear and that hydro and that tidal is going to make that even better. And the, the point here is, I think, Kevin, that, you know, what's happening in the world right now means that we've got to be really, really aware of our energy security. We're going to see oil go up and up in price. So we have to set the foundations in place now to make sure that we are energy independent and don't rely on monopolistic regimes in other countries that are that are always trying to push the the price of oil up um so uh, it, this is an energy transition and you know you can drive your combustion car till you you drop dead uh, but nobody's stopping you do that you, you can you can buy secondhand combustion cars you won't be able to buy a new combustion car at 2035, but if Labour come in, it'll be 2030. So nobody's taking that away from you, but we've just got to understand that this is a sun sunrise technology here, uh, and, and, and the oil and gas is a, a sunset technology, and, and, and the world is changing, and we have to adapt. And there are lots of jobs, there's lots of economic opportunities for the UK to bring this change forward and, and just transform the way we we consume energy and stop burning stuff, basically. Fair enough. I'd like to bring in uh, now, if I can, a former Top Gear presenter, Steve Berry. Uh, good morning, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what, what's your take on this? Uh, are our electric cars safe uh, and are they here to stay? Uh, Quinton Wilson just indicating that uh, about 20% of us now have electric cars. Uh, I've detected a sort of plateauing of the market. People are a bit worried about just how environmentally friendly they are and, of course, the infrastructure. Uh, but do you think they're here to stay? Uh, will uh, sales of electric cars uh, continue to rise? Well, as ever, Quentin talks a lot, a hell of a lot of sense there, and I, found, I find it very difficult. I know we're kind of meant to disagree on this because that's how these sort of programmes work, but yeah, I'm really on, struggling to disagree with <laughs> with what Quentin said, he talks so much sense there. Mike, it doesn't really matter if we do or don't want electric cars, they are here to stay. The motor industry can't make multi-billion dollar decisions and then have governments flip-flop a month or six months or a year down the road. As Quentin will be able to tell you better than me, they have to make investments that are based on 5, 10, 25, 50-year projections of where they're going to be and what they're going to be making. And their hand was forced to a degree by governments. They were sent down this road. There were alternative suggestions. Hydrogen may be as the, as the power source for personal transportation of the future. And, and I do believe that hydrogen will be the power source for commercial traffic, for, for trucks and for ships and for trains. But I think we've got electric cars, whether we like them or not. But today, I was talking to a structural engineer who was to do with one of the big car park fires that happened a few years ago. And at the end of the conversation, which was very enlightening, he said to me, would you be comfortable parking next to an electric car in a car park and leaving your car there for two weeks while you went on holiday? 
And I said, frankly, no. So, you know. So what is this? Why, you know, I'm a sort of technical, mechanical moron. Maybe I'm just a moron generally, but seriously, uh, why do electric cars uh, uh, combust? Why do they explode? Why do they catch fire? Well, after I've spoken well, to the structural it, engineer, not... which was a bit of a head trip, trying to understand everything that he told me, I went and spoke to an electrical engineer who installs complex systems for homes of like um, power windows, air conditioning, all this linked smart home technology. And he understands way more about this sort of thing than me. And he said, one of the problems is poor manufacturing. Yeah. It's not, this is why we haven't heard, haven't heard of too many problems with things like Teslas and Porsches and the high end electric cars. It's maybe he thought a problem with more cheaply manufactured cars, which are sold more cheaply and henceforth there'll be more of them, increasing numbers of them on the roads. The problem of course with lithium ion batteries, as he explained to me, is that when they're burning, they create their own oxygen. And so it's almost impossible to put them out. I think we've all seen photographs on social media. Quentin was talking about scare stories on social media. But the guy I was talking to today was saying the fire brigade's policy at the moment is just let the things burn because it creates its own oxygen. It breaks water down into hydrogen and oxygen. That's what lithium does when it's burning. So the, and the problem is in a car park, if it's parked next to a combustion engine car with a plastic fuel tank, and I don't think many people would realize that most modern cars, the fuel is carried in something that is essentially plastic. Once that plastic melts, it sends petrol through the drainage system of the multi-story car park. And as he said, he couldn't think of a more effective way of burning down a multi-story car park if he tried. An electric car sets on fire, it melts the petrol, petrol tank of the cars next to it, and all of a sudden you've got petrol streaming through the drainage system, which of course a multi-story car park needs to have to get rid of water, um, and it's onto the next floor. And then the fire brigade, and quite rightly in my opinion, just stand back and say, we're not dealing with this, this is an apocalypse. Uh, important to stress, though, Steve, that the Luton Airport car park blaze uh, was not, we understand, caused by an electric vehicle, but uh, nevertheless, a very devastating fire. Good to talk to you. Uh, thank you very much to Steve Berry, former Top Gear presenter, and, of course, Quentin Wilson, the doyen of motoring journalists. Uh